Okay, today we're playing a game on Iconvolve. The average SR of this game was 1,608, and we will be playing May on defense and Farah on attack. And our current team composition is Reinhardt, Diva, May, Genji, Moira, and Zenyatta. So we have a very low damage team comp, which I would expect to be an issue. The thing is with May is that she's one of these heroes where if she takes up one of the DPS slots, you tend to have a fairly low damage team. And then the other DPS is Genji, who doesn't exactly output a very con consistent amount of DPS. So overall, fairly low damage team. We have Moira and Zenyatta, the two supports that do damage, so that kind of evens it out a little bit. But I would expect to have issues actually killing people with this team comp. Also, attacking team, super likely to have a Farah on Iconvald. We don't have anything that can kill Farah. So that's also probably going to be an issue. I do think that... What, like, one of the consistent things with team comps is I think you should always have something that can kill a Farah. Because if you don't have anything that can contest Farah, Farah just wrecks your entire team. Like, she's just that kind of hero. Anyway, in the accompanying email, we have... The questions are as follows. Being a filthy casual, I do not practice much, and I know that my mechanics and aim are not perfect. But what else can I do in terms of decision-making to help improve my win rates? I do not one-trick, but I tend to play more heroes than I would like and can realistically get good with in an attempt to put a band-aid on the worst team comps. What is your opinion on filling picks? Should I stick with a few heroes and improve my mechanics and aiming with them, or should I try to keep filling in glaring problems with team comps if I want to climb? So the thing is with filling is... If you want to be able to fill a very wide variety of heroes, you have to be willing to invest a lot of time into that. Like, I can play, like, about half the cast comfortably, but that took me a fucking long time to actually be able to do that. Because it's not even so much about mechanics and aim with the hero, it's just that every hero plays differently. Even if they fill a similar role, they still play differently. McCree and Soldier are very similar heroes, but they still both play completely differently, and both fill two very different roles in a team. Yeah, they both do DPS, but... Like, it's gonna turn into a whole thing, but like, they're, they're similar, but they're still both completely different, so... If you want to be able to fill, just pick like, one or two heroes in every category, so DPS, tank, support, and just get comfortable playing them. Realistically, you only need to play one in most cases. The reason to be good at two in each role is if someone picked the one that you would have picked, but if you're filling into that role, that is not likely to happen anyway. So just get it, like, just, may, like, maybe you pick, like, two DPS, because, like, DPS is a very broad term. There's quite a few different types of DPS, whereas there are not that many types of tanks and healers. But the, this is a surprisingly controversial opinion I've noticed with the Overwatch community. It's more important you pick a hero that you're good at than one that is better for the team comp. Because if you don't know how to, if you're feeling, like, it doesn't matter if it's the best hero team comp wise, because if you don't know how to play that hero, you won't be able to leverage why that hero is strong, and therefore the pick will mean essentially nothing. Like, you have to actually be good at the hero for it to matter, really, or just decent at the hero, right? If you just don't know what to do, it's not going to work. So just pick, like, one or two heroes in each role and get comfortable playing them, and that that'll be good enough. Probably only one in each role is good enough in most situations. Like, trying to fill a variety of heroes is a very large time investment, because all heroes just, they, they play very differently, even if they're adjacent to each other in role. So, just pick a couple, and just get comfortable playing them. It's not even about the mechanics, it's just play style, really. Um, the other question... You know, not being very good mechanically, what can I improve in terms of decision-making to help me win? So, you don't need to be that good mechanically to actually climb. Um, obviously, it helps. If you have fantastic aim, it's never going to be a detriment, but you don't need to. There are plenty of people in Diamond Masters GM that are not that good mechanically. Um, Decision-making-wise, it's... The best thing, this is going to sound like such unhelpful advice when I first say it, but the best thing you can do is just not die. And I know this doesn't sound helpful, but the thing is that if you want to 
win in Overwatch. Basically, you need to try and exert as much control over the game as possible. And to do that, you need to be able to take a, take advantage of opportunities. And to be able to take advantage of opportunities, you have to be alive. It's like that thing. If you want to make an apple pie, you must first do, con do, uh, construct the entire galaxy, right? Like, you have to be alive to get anywhere else. So this is the only stat I actually track, because I think it's the only one that really matters, is deaths. Try and die as little as possible. You'll just have more opportunities, and therefore you will have a higher chance of winning. I do think deaths is, like, the only stat that's really worth tracking. So, met like, damage done, eliminations, these things can be fudged in so many ways, and, like, inflated and deflated, and it's not really indicative of anything. Your deaths is always very consistently will have an effect on the game. So, die less, as, uh, as unhelpful as that sounds. The other thing is... Try and get really good at using your ultimate. Like, ultimates are very important in Overwatch because they, they are the strongest part of the hero in almost all circumstances. Like Orissa, Winston, eh, not the strongest part of the hero, but the ultimates are generally very strong. And they generally require little to no mechanical input to actually execute. Even ones that are traditionally seen as being very mechanically heavy, like Dragon Blade, are actually quite simple in terms of mechanics. And it's more about the planning aspect of it than anything else. So, die less and get really good at using your ultimate. These are the two things that will have the biggest impact on the game. And how you get really good with your ultimate depends. Like, you said in your email that you're a May main, so the you want to use like it's hard to kill people with blizzard unless they put themselves into very questionable circumstances so you have to get really good at like using it like chucking it in the middle of the fight to like kill their momentum zone them off and just like then you can follow around the people that are in it, freeze them, blah, 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 blah. Get, like, really good at using your ultimate and die less, and those will have the biggest impact on your win rate. And they are basically completely re removed from mechanics. Deaths can be related to mechanics, but deaths tends to come as a consequence of positioning or decision-making more than mechanically being worse than the other person. Unless, like, you're trying to fight a widow as widow. Yeah. It's mechanics, but most most heroes are not that way. So hopefully that answers your questions. If you felt I answered your questions inadequately, please let me know, and I will try to expand further. And now we're going to start the game. So we're playing May right now, so we're performing the May strategy. Zari is fucking going in. She is fucking ready to go. It's an easy to mistake to make. Like, I know what happened. I know what this Arya thought to herself. She thought, hmm, I've picked a, I picked a tank and I've got a bubble, so I've picked Winston. Let's go. Hmm, didn't really work out for her. And then she ran into a May as well. Everybody had to, like, scramper around the sides. Oh, it didn't, didn't work out super well for her. Now, I do want to address, I do want to point you at one other thing in the kill feed, though. Genji fucking died. And I want to, <laughs> Watch the wall, right? Genji tried to back up through that doorway and we cut him off. He probably died regardless, but he got walled off right there and ended up dying to Lucio. So uh, we could have ended up killing him. He shouldn't have been doing what he was doing, but we might have led to him dying. So now we're going to bully this Roadhog and they have a lot of tanks on their team. They have Zarya... Diva and Roadhog, so their team also is relatively low damage, which is beneficial to us. Because we have a lot of heroes that can bully them, as long as they don't kill us, basically. Like, we can bully the fuck out of Diva. We also know they have a Diva, so we want to be trying to bully her as much as possible. Did we know McCree was back there? I feel like we knew McCree was somewhere behind us. Yep, there's a McCree on top of the building. Um, I do the building is a bit ambiguous, because we're kind of looking back and forth between them, like, which building? Um, so we did know there was one behind a McCree behind us. He's over there. We did manage to block his flashbang. Um, we could have just gone looking for him, like, if... Uh, got him in the end. 
Like, we can just go up there and bully him, and, you know, he can kill you, but as long as you block the flashbang, or just shift and recover a bunch of health, he is probably not going to kill you. Remember, this dude's in silver, so, like, he is likely not going to kill you. Um, because most people, when May starts running at them, they start panicking, because they start getting frozen, and it's like when you're trying to fight the Symmetra, you know you gotta kill that Symmetra real quick, but she's fucking jumping around you like a fucking gibbon, and you're just like, oh, please, stop, just let me, no, no, she kills you. May is, has the same effect on people. So, we shouldn't be there, it's alright, we can wall them off and scamper away. We're gonna shift to heal up real quick. It's kind of a scary place to do that in case they follow you, but they did not decide to follow you. We shouldn't have been that far up to begin with, really. The fight was uh, not going super well. Sorry, we got away. Mm -hmm. uh, we could have walled him off. This is what May is really good at. May is really good at killing people, right? She's not good at doing damage. She's good at killing people. These two things are not the same. So, as counterintuitive as that may seem. So, we could have walled him off and tried to kill him. Now, granted, he is still Roadhog, so he probably... But if we walled off, like, that door, suddenly he has to go to this door, and that might be enough time to actually, like, collapse and kill him. Um, probably wouldn't have been in that situation, but... May is a very opportunistic hero. If you have the opportunity to wall off and kill someone, you really want to try and take it. And it's relatively risk-free for you. It's quite hard to die as May, as long as you don't do something really stupid which May players are fairly prone to doing. So we've used Blizzard right here. They are, like, all here, but unfortunately, Zenyatta's using Transcendence. Oh, no. There's a, this, a similar situation happens later where we actually catch a lot of people in Blizzard, but Zenyatta had Transcendence, so we get fucked by that one. Oh, doesn't that feel bad? Oh, no. Oh, no. It's, like, five feet away from his feet face, he's looking at, oh, no, oh, and the person on the bridge <laughs> died as well, um, he was Zarya, uh, didn't wall her off successfully, it's all right, she was fucking dead regardless, didn't manage to freeze D.Va, something I did notice while I was watching is that your aim is very fidgety, which with someone like Mei doesn't really matter that much because you have, like, an AoE weapon, but I've noticed that your aim is very fidgety. Now, this can just be that you're kind of a fidgety person, especially when a fight starts, but it could also be that your sensitivity is, like, a little too high, because you don't want, like, every little input to get read, because then you're like, uh, yeah, uh, right? So it could be that you're kind of fidgety, or your sensitivity is, like, slightly too high, because I did notice that when we were in a fight in people, it tends to be, like, uh, 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 which with May is not a huge deal, but, um... I mean, it can be as well, because the right click is relatively uh, precise, but you don't want to be super fidgety. So uh, we shouldn't be doing this. This is mad greedy. It's kind of hard for us to get punished for it, but it is definitely not unimaginable you die for that. Zenyatta fucking, of all people, Zenyatta came up right behind us and executed us. He fucking wanted it. He's fucking common. Mmm. Didn't even really look like he got a headshot, but he got the headshot marker. I guess the imagine if like the pack back on uh, pack on her were counted as getting a headshot, and if you broke it, it did like the uh, the uh, flamethrower effect, right, where like the pack explodes and does damage around her. Oh, wouldn't that be sick? Not for May, but oh, he's dead. Mm, feels bad, man. Uh, so they haven't really gotten anywhere for a while now. We've got our ultimate, which is a really good ultimate. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, look, oh, look at that. I killed him. Great. It's always nice when you come upon somebody and you're like, Oh, look, oh, fuck, I killed him. Oh, I'm the greatest. I didn't even know I was the greatest, but I'm the greatest. So we've walled off um, Diva. We're going to bully her. Didn't even, like, white wall her off. I think she could have actually slipped out, but she, she didn't slip out. So that's the important thing. We do have our ultimate, but, like, it doesn't seem like the greatest time to use it, realistically. We, McCree was uh, using his ult over there. We weren't really in position to cut him off, so... Uh, things are not looking good. We did, I think, freeze Lucio, but then we ran away. And now we're on the wrong side of the team. 
This is bad. Um, realistically, what you should do right now is throw yourself off the edge behind you, because this is going to take you a long time to get back to your team, probably. I mean, like, if they're bad, right, they won't punish you for this and you'll get away with it. But any play that relies on the enemy team being bad is itself a bad play. The correct play in that situation was throw yourself off the edge so you can regroup with your team faster. Especially since you have your ultimate. You don't want to miss being there at the start of the fight when you're the one with an ultimate. Uh, here comes the sad, sad times again. Because we look at all these people we've caught. Oh, no. Oh. It's lined up so good. We're like, oh, fucking here comes the double kill. Oh, God. Damn it, Zenyatta. Fuck. And then we <laughs> slide away. I, oh, that was very sad. Oh, 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 very greedy to not push shift. Oh, we had shift for so long. We could have so very easily died right there. Don't be greedy. May is, uh, one of the things about May is that she's very hard to kill. There are not many heroes in the game that can actually just kill May without forcing cooldowns out of her ahead of time. Uh, so don't be greedy and throw away that advantage by like, oh, I can get him, I can get him, just, just here. You don't want to be walking around at fucking like one hit and just like anything brushing against you is going to die. So the reason I'm backing up here is we see Discord Orb get put on us while we're crouching behind this wall. That can only that can realistically only mean that Zenyatta can still see us right now. And we are then engage hiding. He just put Discord Orb on us. He's like behind us somewhere. See, even though he had Discord Orb on us and the drop on us, he still couldn't kill us straight up without getting cooldowns out of us first. But like if you get Discord on you in that situation, he has to still be able to see you to put Discord over on you. I fucking hate this fucking visual thing where, like, the two different colors on May's wall happens. Like, I hate that shit. Um, if he, he has to be able to see you to do that, so that means he can see you, which means you shouldn't be just standing still. Because, ooh, he would love if you stood still. So we hear the tire right now, we're gonna wall it off in case it comes through our here, we see it kill Lucio in the kill feed, so we can come back out, I've just, oh god, there is now coffee on the keyboard, it's alright, it's not the first time, it's gonna be fine, it'll survive, it survived worse, so, uh, Tyre killed someone, came back out, start fight, we're gonna bully D.Va, cause we're good at bullying D.Va, we also are really close to having our ultimate, so honestly we just wanna, like, try and bully someone to get our ultimate up as quickly as possible, now we can shift, our wall is actually super inconvenient, comes down in time. Now we're going to throw our ult out. Zenyatta's transcendence is ending as we do this for the first time, so great. Enemy team can't come and touch the objective, even though like a bunch of them are still alive. The blizzard's in the way, so they can't actually get to the objective, and we end up uh, winning the round. Even though we don't really know if we've won the round until we play the other round. So, we are going to be playing... Farah for the rest of the game. I can't remember if we switched to May like towards the end of the game. We're playing a lot of Farah from this point on. So we have Zenyatta on our team and Torbjorn, which is very exciting, obviously. Fat and Skinny is a deceptively good name for D.Va because she is the only hero in the game who is fat and skinny. Think about it, right? So the thing is we're picking um, Farah is it's a lot harder if there isn't a Mercy on your team. Now, Zenyatta is close. Like, Harmony Orb is almost as good. But it is a lot harder to play Farah if you don't have a Mercy on your team. And uh, there are certain combinations of healers I just don't recommend you picking Farah at all. Like, Moira Lucio. Just don't do it. You're just, just going to be sad. Uh, so, yeah, I got Torbjorn. This is very exciting, obviously. Oh, no, Symmetra Ball's coming in. Um, so we know they have a Symmetra, so we want to try and bully her as much as possible because we are playing Farah. So Farah is really good at bullying specific heroes, so priority one is like, figure out if they have those heroes that we're good at bullying. So, you know, Junkrat, Reaper, Torbjorn, Farah, not Farah, you're not good at bullying Farah, uh, Symmetra. Very different hero. 
Uh, we have managed to boop out McCree off the bridge into the low ground. He he should have died for that, realistically, but he managed to get away with it, which is very sad, because, like, he should have died for that. We have a Torbjorn on our team. What can you expect, you know? So, here, similar situation. This time he dies. He did it to himself that time. We didn't even have to do anything. So, uh, Roadhog is down here. We are not good at killing tanks as far, so we don't really want to spend time fighting tanks, if at all possible. We are also not allowed to do what we do right now, which is why we just funnel out this little bridge, right, this little doorway right here. The whole point of FAR is that you abuse height and wide open spaces. You really don't want to funnel through that area. Especially, like, to chase a Roadhog, like, you're not... It's not worth it. You're probably not gonna actually bring that much to killing Roadhog. You're better off just hovering around the bridge still, like, poking and trying to kill the, um, people you're actually good at killing, as far. So, they have a teleporter now. We can destroy that, as far, so we do want to try and find the teleporter. Okay. There's always gonna be turrets here. Like, you, as far, can break these turrets with relative safety. So, that's also a priority, is, like, clearing out the Symmetra nests, because... You can, you've got an AoE weapon, you'll clear out all the turrets really easy, and you can break them from out of their range, so you do have to, like, look for that and clear those turrets out as well. So now, this is the, this is the sad thing about playing Farah and not having, like, a Mercy on your team, or, uh, just, like, a pocket in general, really. Um, as Farah, you have to play so cautiously when you are wounded that... If there isn't somebody on your team that's going to heal you really quickly, it just ends up being really sad where you spend a lot of time hovering around like, oh, God, please, oh, God, I just want to be in the sky hitting people again, but no, it just takes a while. So don't go in there. Again, like, don't... This is not worth it as far. We do want this health kit, but, like, that's greedy at that point. We, we just almost died in this hallway a second ago. Duh, fuck, far as... Yeah, she killed us without ever even actually seeing us. Um, don't, like, try to avoid small confined locations as far as much as possible. They are the exact opposite of where we want to be. We hear a lot of ultimates. Oh, no, he's coming out of the doorway. <laughs> it's like a horror movie when you see the McCree just sliding out of the doorway and there's nothing you can do about it. I remember, I remember reading this thing ages ago that was like, you know... McCree's ultimate might not be the strongest ultimate in the game, but it is the most thematically fitting ultimate in the entire game. And the reason why is, like, think about the scene in the cowboy movie, right, where the big shootout's gonna happen in the town square and everybody's closing up their doors and going inside or, like, pulling the blinds down and shit. That's exactly what happens when McCree starts using his ultimate. It's high noon, fucking everybody goes indoors, they close the fuck, they lock everything, they put the shields up. It's actually very thematically fitting. Is it the strongest ultimate? No. But it's very, it's very much like that scene in the cowboy movie. So, you know, the fantasy of being the cowboy is like all of McCree's character. This is a man who lives in the future. Uh, he lives, like, a hundred years in the future of where we are right now, and he's like, you know who, what is just the absolute coolest? Cowboys. <laughs> he has to want it, you know? Um, he doesn't even have the excuse of being like May and being, like, frozen in a block of ice, right? Like, he wasn't a cryogenically frozen cowboy. No, he just fucking likes cowboys. Anyway, enough lore, right? <laughs> so, we're playing Far still. So Torbjorn's using Molten Core. Uh, we, we've we felt very listless this entire time. Like, it's been three and a half minutes, and I don't feel like we've ever really had a, a clear idea of what we're trying to do. And what we should really be trying to do right now is just, like, focusing on bullying people that we're good at bullying. And we haven't really been doing that. We've just kind of been, like, bouncing around, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, we see, we have the opportunity to kill these people, and we get, we take it, right? We see the opportunity, we take the opportunity, but we're not really looking for, uh, opportunities. We're just kind of, like, bouncing around the map, like, eh, meh, 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 something's gonna turn up. When you're playing any hero, really, it's important to know, like, what you have to do to try and win the game. Right. And typically it's bully the people you're good at bullying. Right. So when you're playing, especially a DPS hero, the DPS heroes tend to have things that they're really good at doing. 
So you are just trying to get in the position where you can do the thing that you're really good at doing, right? Farah is really good at abusing long sight lines and verticality. And she is very good at bullying squishy targets and static defenders. We know they have squishy targets and static defenders, so really we want, this whole time what we should be doing is we've got to be playing around McCree because he's the one that's going to kill us. So we have to be like paying attention to him. We should be looking to clear out the Symmetra nests and the turret, the teleporter, if we reasonably can, because we as far uh, are one of the people who can get to a teleporter with relative ease. Even if you have to suicide to get the teleporter, it's worth it because you trade your life for her very powerful ultimate. It's worth it, even if you die to do it. Um, but we've just kind of, we haven't felt like we have a plan. Like, we're looking to clear out Symmetra's stuff, and then bully the supports, bully Symmetra, and try to avoid McCray, right? And then, if we can't do any of those things, we're just looking to, like, bully whoever we have the opportunity to bully. Uh, be careful about just, like, jumping straight up, because you do need to know where McCree is. Easiest way to die as far is you jump out in open space without thinking about the cover in the third dimension, and then you just end up floating around and getting killed. We almost started trying to Goomba Stomp uh, Roadhog right there and thought better of it. Ooh, definitely not a hero that we want to Goomba Stomp. That, like, this is the freest money I've ever seen in my life. We just come over the wall, and what do we see? The two supports right next to each other, no problem. That was like, like... I would have ulted right there because I'd consider it a worthwhile trade. I'll die, sure. I'm going to take Moira and D.Va with me, though. F Mercy's already dead. We just killed her. We kill D.Va. Like, completely. Like, she's out of mech right now. We kill her. We kill Moira we with her ultimate. Yeah, we'll die. But we traded our life and our ultimate for three people, one of which was using their ultimate and two of which were supports. That's a trade I'll take, honestly. Like, and we have the spawn advantage as well. Now, as we see, it ends up not really mattering because we kind of just end up killing them anyway. I'm just like, I'm an aggressive boy. I see the opportunity to kill those two people for just me. I'm like, fuck yeah, one for three is a worthwhile trade when my spawn is right there. Ended up not really mattering though. That's, that's what I would have done. Uh, I, I considered that to be a worthwhile trade and like, this opportunity I see right in front of me, I'm gonna get it. You know, I don't know if I'm gonna get the opportunity to kill them again. So we are almost here. We're gonna use our ultimate right now. As we see, uh, as we see in hindsight, not using our ultimate there ended up paying dividends because we used it here and we got a lot of value out of it again. And we end up winning this fight. So with the benefit of hindsight, we get to go, oh, so saving the ultimate was correct. I would have just totally killed Baby Diva and Moira, though. Like, fuck, fuck your coalescence. Fuck you. Just, you ain't getting back in that mech. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's how I am. I'm an aggressive player. Fucking low. Oh, shift key is the fav my favorite button on the keyboard. Um, ah, yes. I remember it like it was yesterday. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So. Um, thing, things that stand out the most in this game, it just doesn't feel like we really know that clearly what we're trying to accomplish in the game. Um, it, it's, it is important to know, like, what you have to do to win the game. And it basically, it always, it varies from hero to hero, but basically it all comes down to get in the positions you're strong in and avoid the positions you're weak in. Try to do what your hero is good at while avoiding the things your hero is bad at. So, like, if you're playing far, don't go in confined locations, abuse the wide open spaces, long, signs of light, long lines of sight to bully people who can't really respond to you that that well. And even those who can, as long as, like, McCree and Soldier, as long as you're playing around cover, they still probably won't kill you unless they're really fucking good. So, uh, for May, it's like, bully around, like, get picks, look for, May's a very opportunistic hero. Look for people who are out of position, fucking bully them. If they have heroes on their team that you're particularly good at bullying, like D.Va, um, Genji, even Winston, if they have heroes that you're really good at bullying, bully the fuck out of those heroes. This is true of all heroes. If they have an enemy, if they have a, someone on their team 
that you are, you can abuse very easily, abuse the fuck out of them. That person should be like your number one priority. Because if you just abuse them, you'll take them out of the game. And taking somebody out of the game is the biggest impact you can possibly have on the game, really. Like, it's like, well, if I have like the opportunity to kill one person, or the, and, and I have an opportunity to kill another person, that's higher priority, but I'm less likely to kill them. You should just kill the person you're more likely to kill, even if they are a lower priority target, because taking someone out of the game is just very fucking big. So if there's somebody on their team that you're good at abusing, like the Eva, focus, as may, just focus the fuck out of that person. Just don't let them have any fun. Especially as, especially as May, because May is one of those heroes that tilts the fuck out of the enemy team. So if there's somebody on their team you can abuse, abuse the fuck out of them. They are going to get super tilted. They're going to get tilted after they die like twice to you. And then you just keep focusing on them. Even if they switch heroes, keep focusing that person. Because they're like, fucking May, god damn it. And as we all know, the team that tilts first is the team that loses. So, thank you very much for watching if you did. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer. If you felt I answered your questions from the email inadequately, please let me know, and I'll try to expand further, and I hope you found the video helpful.